Auschwitz is a place associated with death and horror. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't live. Kitty Hart Moxon was a prisoner here and she's taken me back to the world's most notorious concentration camp where people were taken to be killed. So we're here three days, four days, naked, on bare boards, waiting their turn into the gas chamber. I had never been to a place like Auschwitz before, and this incredible lady is one of the few remaining survivors of this barbaric regime. When we arrived, my mother, my mother said, uh, I can't believe they're roasting so much meat here. That's what my mother said, you know. Not because she had no idea what was happening here. That was the smell, mm. burning flesh. How many souls were lost in here, screaming in that jar, thinking water was going to come down, and just screaming for life? I can't believe it's taken me so long to come here. Bielska Biała is a city in the south of Poland, but during the Second World War it was occupied by Germany. The synagogue that once stood in this street was burnt to the ground, and in fear for their lives, Jewish families fled their homes. That's my friend Trauda. Uh, she was. Uh, uh, the, the Polish champion in 1939, my club won the Polish championship. When the war broke out, the Poles here took away the statue because it was Jewish and they thought they'll destroy it and they hid it and they re-erected it after the war. Kitty Hart Moxon grew up in this city and there are many places that hold happy childhood memories here. We picnicked here, we played here, we, we did some diving, we, we had a training here. Our mothers used to come in the afternoon and collect us, you know, and perhaps bought a picnic or something. But as war loomed, it soon became clear, even to children, that everything was changing. But we were walking here and people were clapping, all the, all the clubs, and when we walked, we were stoned. Stoned? Stoned. There were stones came from all over, stones. And I turned to my friend and said, well, why, 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 why all these stones? Well, she said, don't you know, we're the Jewish club and they don't like us. And then, of course, the Jews won the championship. So that... How old were you at that age? Uh, well, I think we're talking about the year of 1939, 12. I was going on for 13. Then. So what did you say when your friend said... I didn't know. I didn't know what it was all about. It was the first time that there was some sort of anti-Semitism. The rise of the Nazis was soon overshadowing every aspect of life, even here at this swimming pool. That's when the Germans were here. He's got a, a picture of a swastika. There. There. Yeah, so you've got to get a flag with a swastika. So that's during the war. They used it here, the Germans, during the war. But that swastika, it robs all of those beautiful memories well, it does, it you does. had of your well, childhood, of course it does. It? Of course it does. But the good thing is, they were defeated. But that defeat would be many years after occupation, years that would have a dreadful impact on many families. For Kitty, it would mean leaving Bielsko Biawa. You see this big building, or we're not far. Back in the city, she wants to show me all the places she remembers, including the building where her family had lived. Changed a lot from now. Just open the door and walk in. On the banisters were these wonderful sunflowers. Very high doors, can you say? Your face is lit up when you come in here. Well, it has. Yeah, maybe, yeah.
it's clear that this city does feel like home to Kitty and being forced to say goodbye is a moment she's never forgotten. Now we had to flee like two or three days prior to the outbreak of the war because we were near the frontier and we already knew invasion was, obviously my father knew invasion was going to take place. My mother and I were on holiday. We weren't here. Uh, we got back and when we got back it was absolute chaos, you know, the whole house was in chaos. They were packing everything up and they were sending it somewhere uh, and we had to go. Was your mum crying? No, they were just uh, simply getting on with it. You just knuckle down and do it. Yeah. So you don't think of any emotion. Yeah, you don't just knuckle down and do it, do you? Well, you do. It takes you a do. strength. It takes a. Well, you do, but it's no good you getting emotional and starting crying because then you're not going to act rationally. We take for granted now mm. the security we have, don't oh, we? All right. Yeah, yeah. Because you were just. You could be ripped out of your yeah. comfort and, and, instantly. And, 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 and worse to come, these people that were fleeing, they were followed by the planes that were coming over the invasion, which uh, were flying very low and were strafing people that were fleeing. Strafing? You know, they were shooting. Machine gunning? Machine gunning from the planes. They came very low and people were hiding in ditches and whatever, and that, that was, they, were, they were hit as they were fleeing. Kitty and her family were able to get a train out of the city. Others were not so lucky. Many Jews were rounded up in Bielsko Biawa and taken to the Auschwitz concentration camp. The lives they knew were over. Here, hundreds of thousands would be killed by the Nazis. Kitty was one child who managed to escape Auschwitz, if only for a short time. She travelled with her parents to Lublin in the east of Poland. It's nothing far. It's very, very close, you know. And I'm yeah. retracing that journey with her. Yeah. In what was once the Jewish ghetto, there's a museum that chronicles this city's past. Kitty's here to retrace her own personal history. This isn't the actual document, because my documents were taken away by the Gestapo, mm -hmm. sent to Auschwitz, you know. So but it took me 50 years to find this in the archives in Germany. And the staff have agreed to help her find the places important to her in Lublin. The church, the forest, yeah. uh, the, the manor house. Yeah, and the post office, yeah. And the, the post office. Kitty's family travelled to this city to escape the Nazis, but soon after they arrived, German troops invaded, and she remembers them terrorising the Jewish families in these streets. The roundups, the police battalion smashing into the homes constantly, pulling people out, throw them, throwing them down, getting them to assemble at the bottom and deporting them. Throwing them where? From down the stairs. Downstairs, down from wherever they're sometimes, sometimes out of the windows. They just pick people up and threw them. Got it? Sometimes when there was such a raid, you hid. One, once I hid with, with uh, one of these boys that I knew under the bed. And I remember I, I was saying something and he, he put his hand in front of my mouth to really keep quiet. So they upped the aggression every time? All the time, yeah, all the time there was this terror, you know and this uh, incredible massacres that went on. Increasingly, families in the ghetto felt cut off from the rest of the world, but some did try to tell relatives what was happening. My mother would write nearly every day, you know, and I used to go and post letters, but that's the only one that came through. And she wrote it in German, so they could read it and censor. It was censored, look. So a censored stamp, but she knew that didn't write anything of any importance, you know. Uh, and my, my relatives didn't speak Polish anyway, so she wrote in German, but it's, uh, it's got all our signatures there. Uh, Polish? Yeah. That's mine, though. No? Viele Grüße. Yeah. Many kisses? Many kisses. Many kisses, Kitty. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it weird? Even getting to the post office became difficult for the Jewish population as barbed wire and soldiers separated this city. They never got as far as sealing it, but we always knew they were going to do it. 31 was closed and surrounded with the, with the fence. Yeah. And that's the town divided? Yeah.
this city was changing and becoming very dangerous. They were patrolling almost all the time around the ghetto and when you saw a patrol you were supposed to get off the pavement into the gutter. I did know that and I got off but my friend didn't get off. He didn't get off. He said, why should I get off? You know, He didn't get off and this patrol, they just pulled his gun and shot him through the head. That was the first time I, I really, really understood danger. You saw him, I saw him shot dead? Shot dead, yeah, in front of me, yeah. It must still haunt you. Yeah, it'd been haunting me for a long time because uh, I, I, I kind of felt guilty. That why didn't I pull him, you know, uh, into the gutter kind of thing, you know. How old was he? Uh, he was 15. He was just a little older than me, yeah. In fear for his family, Kitty's father made the difficult decision to leave Lublin. They travelled to a small village south of the city, but when troops threatened and killed people there too, they had no choice but to flee again. This time, Kitty and her parents hid in woodland. 70 years today, I was in this forest. <laughs> How, how, how can you believe that? Huh? And this forest had its own dangers. In the night time we, we had the wolves. Mm. The wolves came around sniffing, you know, and... Uh, the wolves? Wolf, pack of wolves, yeah. And there, there wasn't just one wolf, they'd say, oh, you know, the wolves howl. That's, that's all you heard in the night with the glowing eyes. Mm. We were not afraid of the wolves. Kitty, I'm not sure you'd be afraid of anything. Oh yeah, oh God, no, don't say that. I'm terribly afraid of the patrols, because they found us, they just shot us, you know. So, uh, oh yeah, it was pretty scary. But what do you do? It's no good screaming, because then you give yourself away, yeah? So, you know, you, you lie low. What's it feel like to be back here 70 years later? Well, it's just incredible, isn't it? Yeah, to actually come back, to remember the places, and to tell people what's happened. You see, if it was me, I don't think I'd want to go back. I think I'd want to block it out. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't want to revisit it, any it, of that it doesn't tragedy work. in there. It just believe you me, if you try to block things out, it does never work. Because it haunts you. And no, no, it doesn't work. That's where a lot of the survivors made a mistake. They, just, they block it out. But it doesn't work like that. Because you got it in your head, and it happened to you. And you've you got to actually talk about it. I wouldn't last two minutes in there. Oh you yes, lasted you would. Three weeks. You would have lasted a lot longer than me because you got all this to get rid of. <laughs> you could have lived. You could have lived on all that for, for a couple of months. <laughs> all these places are important pieces in Kitty's story, but finding them is anything but easy. <laughs> and it's particularly difficult for me. <laughs> I'm alright. Oh my god! One building she's been desperate to find is a church in Lublin. The priest here gave them false documents to try to help them evade the Nazis, and Kitty has fond memories of them. He looked like a tomato, you know, kind of, a bit like you, kind of red and uh, a little bit. <laughs> so I look like a tomato? <laughs> uh, oh, it's a heavy door, thank you. Oh, yeah, it's, this it's, is the it's, church. It's very much to, to what it was. But once given the false papers inside this church, it was decided the family should be split up for their own safety. The priest had a plan, and the plan was we had to part because we couldn't survive all of us together. So, Which is a pity. Well, it just couldn't be done. Yeah, we, we would have all got killed. That's the point. And, he, and we all had different names and things, and it would have been too difficult. For men, it was very difficult. Sometime after they separated, Kitty's father was killed. But she wasn't to know that until well after the war was over.
Kitty and her mother went to this railway siding and blended in with a group of Poles being taken to work in Germany. But when they arrived, it was discovered by the SS that they were Jews and they were sentenced to death. They came for us the next morning and took us uh, into this courtyard uh, and we had to stand facing the wall, got it with the arms up. And at the back of us, there were all, all the machine guns with the men in helmets waiting to shoot. And then we were just standing there and nothing was happening and all of a sudden was this great explosion. Yeah, that was just pish. And some of these people fell to the ground, you know? And I, I, I sort of touched myself, I remember. And I thought, well, I hadn't been hit. One of the SS came and he said, no, we we're not going to shoot you just like that. No, 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 no. We have to know where these documents came from. I don't know whether they found out from other people, certainly from us, they, they didn't know our document. And so what they did eventually, they commuted our death sentence to life imprisonment in Auschwitz. Over a million men, women and children died in the Auschwitz concentration camps. And I'm travelling back there with Kitty. She was just 15 when she was held in Birkenhau, the second of the camps at Auschwitz. It was known as the death camp. When people were taken off the trains here, they were forced into a building known as the sauna. Here, they were stripped of all their possessions. Both the prisoners and their clothes were disinfected. They saw all these constructions, which they didn't know what it was. And they thought there were factories. They thought people were working. They saw us working, wandering around working. So it did give people, gave people a, a sense of security, if you like because it was all a deception. Kitty witnessed what the soldiers called the sorting of people. Well, sorting out meant people who uh, were allowed into the camp and people who were, went straight into the gas chambers. They were still being sorted out here. So people were stripped, completely stripped naked. Children, adults together? Uh, sometimes children with mothers, sometimes the children on their own. They'd take the children away from their mothers. The children weren't allowed to live, so they, they didn't even come into the sauna. They were taken straight to the gas chamber. Do you know what those photographs do for me? There's all machinery around this place, and the machinery to dehumanise people and to kill people, and that personalises it. Well, it does personalise it, that's why they've done it. It, person it shows you the people, uh, most of whom actually perished here, you know, were killed here. In Birkenau, the gas chambers and crematoria now lie in ruins. But Kitty has vivid memories of the crimes committed here. There was a time when they were burning them alive. They weren't just burning the bodies that were here, you know. There, was, there were occasions when they were burning them alive, so you had all the screams. The end of my hut is almost a few yards to the gas chamber. So what, was, the, what, was, the, what was it like being so close? What was the smell like? Well, the smell was horrendous. Well, when we arrived, my mother, my mother said, uh, I can't believe they're roasting so much meat here. That's what my mother said, you know. Not because she had no idea what was happening here. That was the smell. Mm. Burning flesh, you know. And you had big chimneys and actually had fire coming, fire and smoke coming out. Sometimes the smoke was so dense, you know, the whole place was kind of blacked out. So there was never an ending stream of people. So a group of people would be set in these woods, just sit there, picnicking. The children would uh, pick some flowers. There's a flower bed here and a bit of a lawn, you know, just a, a pretense. Kitty, the picture that you've just painted there in my yeah. mind is of children here yeah. picking flowers. Yeah. 
Yes. And the gas chambers yes. there. Yeah. Life, death. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly that. But these people didn't connect that. They thought there were some factories. They didn't know those were the gas chambers. Why were the people waiting up there on the hill? Because there wasn't any room in the gas chamber. They were full. What's it like, Kitty, watching people walk to their death? Well, you saw it day in, day out, and there's absolutely nothing. You were just helpless, weren't you? You know, you were simply helpless. There's absolutely nothing you could do. Well, you had the choice. You could go in with them. The gas chambers may be gone from Birkenau, but they can't be forgotten. And a short distance away in the main Auschwitz camp, there's still some standing. So this is where they stood? Yeah, and that's where they threw in the gas. And these people thought water was going to come down? Exactly, that, that's what he'd said to the showers. And they were packed in here? Yeah, and then they were burnt in there. Burnt in the ovens. All this is presented as a warning from history. And the possessions of the dead are all around this museum. It was Kitty's job in the camp to sort through the men's jackets looking for valuables. If you look, those are genuine suitcases where people had to actually put their names on. Why? I don't know, because they're all going to die. Because they didn't know. All these people are dead. But that was a deception. You know, people thought, oh, well, we've got to take a suitcase, we've got to go somewhere. That looks like a child's case, was oh, a little God, tiny Yeah, one. there'd be loads of suitcases from all over Europe. Kitty has much more to show me, from the crutches taken from prisoners, not valued by the Nazi regime, oh. to the hair taken from people about to die in order to make cloth. Fades and deteriorates. This is the very worst I've seen. And that's... This a is, fraction this is, of what there was, of course, like I've said to you. Most of the stuff's been burned down. That's what they salvaged after the war, because they came and burned it all down. So they just shaved this off, people? Well, yeah. Well, some, some, some hair was shaved as people came in, into the camp, but then hair was shaved also after they were gassed. I actually wonder when I ask Kitty if she has been damaged by this, I wonder, how could she not be? And she's, she's telling the story, and she's, she's asking the question, she's, she's pointing out that this is hair from a human being. But I, but I do think that she has maybe told the story so many times, because she wants so many people to know that she underestimates the impact. Do you know what? I thought I'd cry when I came here. I don't want to cry. I'm just so, so angry. I'm furious. The possessions on show here are deeply personal. It's only when I stood beside them that it really hit me. I noticed you crying coming down the <laughs> stairs. Yeah. Um, it was just the shoes, uh, the children. I don't know if I can have two. I'm sorry. I don't know if I can. Just when I saw the children's shoes, it was too much. You just don't mean to the hair too. We saw the hair. It was very difficult for me to speak when I cried, sorry. But when we saw all that hair and the Jews, it was just, just realized how many people it was. And I just, I can't even know if I can be in this building anymore. I think I might have to go outside. Fear was a very common emotion in Auschwitz, nowhere more so than in Block 25, known as the Death Block. When selections were carried out to the gas chamber, which was nearly every day somewhere else, they were put in there naked, naked, in there, waiting to die, sometimes three days, four days a week, without water. It was in here that female prisoners were held before being taken to the gas chambers. Well, the bars on the windows were there so the people couldn't get out. Uh, and if you passed it, which you didn't really want to know, went to do, uh, 
because it was really out of bounds. Uh, hands of people were sticking out, just begging for a drink, because they were here three days, four days, naked, on bare boards, waiting their turn into the gas chamber. And uh, the stench, when they opened the doors here, is sort of unbelievable, and you could smell it all, all over the camp. So you kept away, because you knew you were going to be next here. There wouldn't have been one person? Eight. Per eight to one of these. Eight people to one of these. In, in, all, in all these, in all these uh, stone huts. Kitty rats live better? You know, rats, uh, rats would eat the people alive, you know. Rats were running around and, you know, just biting people. Kitty and her mother were moved out of Auschwitz shortly before it was liberated. They were taken on a so-called death march, used as slave labour and held in other camps. Somehow, they survived. But so many they knew didn't. When you talk about lots of these people, these beautiful, lovely human beings reduced to ice, mm -hmm. Does that give you nightmares? Does that, does that traumatise you? But not anymore. It did, yeah, I'm sure it did. It when did. you were here or afterwards? When I, was, when I was here, I tried to shut it out completely. You know, like I said to you, you had to hypnotise yourself. So you, you simply didn't see it because you couldn't live. And I saw people that took it in and committed suicide. So it was either you took it in, committed suicide, or you, you, sort of, you, know, you don't want to know. So at what point did you start having the nightmares? Well, I probably had nightmares immediately after, you know, after, and then I began to analyse what's the good of me having nightmares, what's the good of me hating. You're entitled to hate. You're I entitled be. to hate yeah, the people did, that did this. Yeah, but it destroys you if you do that. If you start hating, it destroys you. I, I don't think understand what, that. I just well, I, I, th it I think it destroys you. It's yeah, natural but, emotion. Yeah, but who's going to hate first? You know, like we were saying, that all these people all around Europe were, were um, responsible because there were a lot of collaborators. You're going to hate everybody because you don't know who was who. Uh, where, where do you stop the hate? All around the camps at Auschwitz there are reminders of the atrocities committed here. For me, I feel privileged to have been on this journey with a lady who has survived so much. Her life story is amazing and her knowledge of a human being's capacity for evil is invaluable. This is where they were gassed. If I was to ask you of all the thoughts you have, all the stories you've told, mm. what is the prevailing lesson about all of this? Oh, the prevailing lesson is that you never know when it can happen again. <laughs>